Well, brothers and sisters, for this Christmas message on this uh, Christmas day, we have a slightly different passage that we're going to look at than perhaps uh, normal. Uh, you've already heard the Christmas story as read by uh, our candle lighters and our readers earlier, uh, but now we are going to look a little bit later in the Gospel of Luke, and we are going to look particularly at uh, a quote in the Gospel of Luke from the prophet Isaiah. So I'd invite you to turn with me to Luke chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. Luke chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. And in there, uh, we are reading sort of the story of John the Baptist as he has grown up and he has become a prophet in the wilderness. And uh, this is what Luke says that Isaiah says about um, John the Baptist. A voice, sorry, as it is written, we'll start there. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all mankind will see God's salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but when I am driving uh, in a nice car, which I, you know, I have my little blue car that I enjoy to drive. When I'm driving in a blue car, one of my favorite things that I enjoy doing as I drive along, is driving on twisty, crooked, windy, up and down roads in, in the, the Canadian Shield of Ontario or wherever. I love those twisty, windy roads. And so as I have thought about that over the years, it has made me wonder about this passage. I wonder about this passage, why, why are we straightening all these things? Why are we getting rid of the fun hills and the, and the twisty roads and so on? Is it just so that things can be made easier for people? It's a little bit akin for me to the, the, the concept of how in Revelation we hear that at one point there will be no sea anymore. And, and I wonder about that, and I wonder about this. But brothers and sisters, we may have been, or maybe it's just me, looking at this passage all wrong, all the way along. You see, John the Baptist comes and prepares the way of the Lord. And how does he prepare the way of the Lord? Well, he prepares the way of the Lord by making the way of the Lord visible for everyone. Think about it. If you are in a landscape that is twisty and windy and bumpy and hilly and so on and so forth, if there's pine trees all over the place and, and so on and so forth, you can't see where you are going very well at all. And truth be told, that is often what our lives feel like too, as if we cannot see ahead of us the way that we are going. We cannot see our destination. We don't know what every corner around every corner holds or what's going to happen. Look at 2020 for goodness sakes. In 2019, there is no way on earth I was expecting to be here at this time and in this place. I mean, I expected to be in Athens CRC. I just expected all of you to be with me. But if you are on a completely flat landscape, 
where all the hills have been removed and all of the valleys filled up. And if the road ahead of you is straight as an arrow, then you can see a long way off. And that is what John the Baptist does. He is making the way straight, not by literally filling in the valleys, not by literally knocking down the mountains, not by literally straightening out the roads and highways, but by revealing truth, by revealing truth. Remember what John says Immediately after this, John, uh, in Luke chapter 3, verse 7, John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as, I fa as our father, for I tell you that out of these Stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. The people listening to John then ask him, well, what are we supposed to do then? And John says to them, repent, repent and live lives that are good and honorable. He tells the tax collectors to return money that is not there. He tells the soldiers to, to do what they are supposed to do in honorable fashion, right? He, 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 he guides the people. He tells them the truth. Because another way of looking at this life is to see that all of the lies and all of the half-truths represent the twists and turns in our lives. We deceive ourselves by hiding the way ahead of ourselves. We deceive ourselves by pretending we are something that we are not. We deceive ourselves and others, if it were possible, with everything from little white lies to those lies that are ultimately just designed to protect our own skin. And if we believe those lies, if those lies are never taken away from us, then we can never really see the truth of Jesus. Listen, if I go along believing that I'm a good guy, I'm all right, I'm not as bad as some people, I've done more good things than bad things. If I go along believing those things about myself, then when Jesus comes, when love comes down on Christmas, I have no need of him. I don't need God. I don't need Jesus. I'm already okay. But that is a lie. And this is what John does. He pulls away the lies. You brood of vipers. Who warned you of the coming wrath? Brothers and sisters, this is part of our reality too. It wasn't only John who was called to pull down the lies and to make the way clear for everybody. It is our calling too. We also are called 
to make it so that all mankind can see God's salvation. And that little, little baby, Jesus, love come down from heaven. In order for people to receive the love of Jesus, they need to also receive the truth that apart from him, they and we are a brood of vipers. Now, does that mean that we walk around holier than thou, proclaiming our judgment upon all and sundry and say, hey, look, you are a brood of vipers. Is that what we are called to do? No. Because the reality is, is that the Bible tells us very clearly that all of us were in the same boat. All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so it cannot be that we can approach other people and say, you're bad, I'm good. That is contrary to the gospel message. But instead, in preparing the way, we say, hey, look, this is the truth. You're part of the brood of vipers. But I've been there too. And by the grace of God, There is a way out. Brothers and sisters, in order to keep the truth of Christmas alive and well throughout the year, we need to be bearers of the message of the truth of God, both the truth of the reality that we are part of the brood of vipers and so is everyone else on this earth, and the truth that the way out of being that brood of vipers is through Jesus Christ, God's Son. So, brothers and sisters, let us, yes, receive the love of God come down in Jesus. And let us be honest, truth bearers who smooth the way so that everyone can see, who tear down the lies, including the lies we tell ourselves, so that all can see. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so very much for John the Baptist. Thank you even more, far more, for Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. God, help us to first receive the truth that we are part of the brood of vipers in and of ourselves, and then to receive the truth of God's love in Jesus Christ. And further, O God, may we be like John the Baptist in the sense that we also bring honest truth to those around us. Help us to have the courage to call out injustice and unrighteousness and help us to do so humbly, recognizing that we are not perfect either. And further, O God, help us to bring all people through the power of your Spirit, into the love of Jesus Christ that came down on Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.